What's going on, guys? Christopher Serrano here. Thanks again for tuning in to another tutorial session of mine. Today, I will be demonstrating how I made this chainmail hood here using ZBrush's micro poly uh, feature. Hope you enjoy. All right, guys. So what I want to do is go to the light box and get my demo head here, <clears throat> just so it's easier to work on. I'm going to get my reference up in just a second yeah here we go I kind of use like the pure ref for every reference until I get too much reference and then I just start a new one but anyway here we go I want to give this guy <clears throat> a couple subdivisions that way the mask is uh, pretty smooth and I'm gonna start masking this open hole right here for the face so it's gonna be pretty easy. Just mask where you want the face to go through, pretty much. Make sure it comes down to a point right to the neck. And then hit control click offside the, the mesh so it'll invert the mask just like this. Now the mask area is going to be this chain now. <clears throat> so I want to come down here to extract. I want to make sure it's zero thickness because I just want it to be a single layer. Hit extract. It's going to give you a little preview of it and you have to hit accept. And then it'll pop out a new subtool right here. And then I'm going to solo it just so you can see what's inside. <clears throat> it looks like it kind of masks some of the mouth, but it's okay. I'm going to hit shift F to see the polyframe. Hit, I'm going to hit uh, auto groups here so that way it uh I can just grab this by itself and then <clears throat> that kind of deselects the that little mouthpiece. Hit delete hidden to make sure I just want to be working with this guy. And as you can tell it's a little bit too small so what I want to do is I'm gonna hit shift F to get it off polyframe and make sure I'm on this hood here. I'm gonna rename it chainmail hood just to make just to be neat. Okay, and then I want to go ahead and pretty much move it over the guy's head to to look like a hood. So B M V for move. Make sure your symmetry's on, and then just kind of like move it to where you would like the hood to be. It looks kind of weird right now because it has the ear still, but we're gonna smooth that out <clears throat> and uh, get it looking a lot better. So I'm gonna go ahead and start smoothing the ear out. All right, you know what, I'm actually going to hit, since it's a little too dense right now, I'm going to hit it with a Z remesh, go half, that way it just it's a little bit more workable um, topology. Okay, so it's starting, see how it's kind of easier to smooth the ear out now. So, let's see, BMV to move it out more still looking a little nasty so keep smoothing see we mesh one more time so now see how I can kind of get rid of it right now <clears throat> it might take one more actually I know it's gonna take one more <clears throat> so I'm gonna hit it again see we mesh a half you kind of have to do this until you get desired topology all right yeah this should be good for right now so we're just gonna continue forward and make sure you got the hood where you want it to be. It looks like it's kind of going down the cheekbone right here, or just the cheek in general. So I'm gonna move it kind of towards the eye here. Make sure it's a little straight. And then uh, it looks like the neck area is too thin, so I'm gonna pull that out. And then it just points down at the, the neck right there. So it's a little messy right now, but just wait until we get the desired shape and it's going to start coming together. Keep smoothing out to make sure all the topology is pretty even. Even back here. Yeah. Let's 
looking pretty good. I'm going to hit Z Remesh at the same amount because I want to keep this amount of faces and topology. Get Z Remesher. Uh, it might actually clean up this little area. Yeah, see, it just cleaned everything up. Beautiful. Still have some there, but you can just smooth those out. Alright, cool. So now it looks like we have a little hood. I'm going to hit Shift F. That's just what it looks like without the, the wireframe. <clears throat> now it's where it gets kind of cool. So what I want to do is I want to go to geo or I want to go to let's see, geometry, dynamic subdivision or subdivide, and then I'm going to hit dynamic, and it, you can see how it kind of kind of did something. It's just smoothing things out. Just uh, giving you a preview of what it would look like when it's smoothed out. And then um, let's see, you can hit smooth subdivisions to zero, that way it doesn't uh, mess with the mesh. And you see how it kind of pulls things away there? You don't want that right now, so you can just move it down to zero, keep it how it was before you hit dynamic. And then now to get the chain mail look, this is super easy, super cool. You go over here to micro poly on, hit micro poly on, and it uh, pops up a whole bunch of like alphas kind of, or just tiny meshes that are able to be repeated over pretty much every face of the mesh. So what I want to do is I want to hit, since we're doing chain mail, see they got a couple chain, got chain mail linked, chain mail one, chain mail two, chain twist. I'm going to go with chain mail two here, and then look at that, just with clicking on it, it it pretty much changes all, the whole mesh to, to a chain mail. You can hit align and it kind of aligns everything. Watch out. I hit control Z to go back. When I hit align, since everything looks kind of messy right now, once I hit align, it kind of uniforms all of the links to the direction of the faces, which is actually pretty cool. So there's that and you can also Go through here if you don't like that chain. You can you can hit this chain twist, which kind of looks a little bit more like chain mail. You can see how the loops are kind of intertwining, which is actually pretty cool. So I want to go with that one. And right now, like the links look a little small, and that's just because of if I hit if I turn off dynamic, that's because of the 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 faces here, how small they are. So if I wanted to maybe get bigger chain links. Uh, I can just go to back to Z Remesher. Z Remesh, I can go half. And it shouldn't really mess anything up. You just see it gives a little bit bigger and cleaner topology. That should be okay. Go back to geometry, dynamic, subdivide, hit dynamic, and then since I already clicked the chain, it's already it's already there again. So check it out. If I hit mess with the scale, it shouldn't. Yeah, that doesn't make anything. You can also rotate. You can also rotate if you don't like the positioning. Rotate X, rotate Z. Definitely don't want to do that. So just keep it back. Keep it to uh, to where it is, where you like it. And um, since this guy right here has a couple folds, I kind of like that. So I have a couple folds around the neck here. I'm gonna turn off dynamic subdivide and just go B. ST for the standard brush and I'm going to turn the intensity down a little bit it's like, so it's just not too crazy and then I'm just going to go ahead and play around the neck area here just give it a couple couple wrinkles like this guy right here and then probably just like one more on top right here it's good to do it on a low intensity that way you just have better control and then down the back here make sure it's kind of bulging like a you know, like an actual hood would be. Cool. So there is our hood with the wrinkles and everything. Now let's go back to dynamic subdivide and look at it looks so much better with, with the wrinkles on there. And then even if you you don't have to hit dynamic to go back and mess with it, you can just hit the move brush to so just like move it from here. See, because everything is kind of dynamic, so you can just kind of edit it on the fly and then I'm just gonna 
move the chain mail around just to kind of make it look a little bit more like this guy right here. And then probably give like a little point down here. Looking pretty good. And then if you don't want chain mail, you can go, you can literally try all these different little uh, mesh with the arrows here. See if you want to do some sort of fabric or some sort of cloth. They also have ropes here. Let's see what happens if I hit the line. Okay. Go back to where I had it. Oh yeah. See this is the and this is also the other chain mail which looks pretty cool. So let's see. Chain linked. Let's see. Oh yeah. I have so many, it's awesome. So we have Celtic chain link this one looks cool I might keep this one this one just has kind of like a wavy wavy links yeah no, I'm gonna go with yeah chain link awesome so and if, if you wanted to you know make this uh, actual mesh just hit apply here and now it becomes the actual mesh and if you wanted to give it like a like a metal material just to kind of like make it look more chain y go to sub tool make sure you got the chain mill on make sure you hit this M for material button the material channel hit the matte cap here the material button and uh, just kind of I stick to the standard materials here so I'm just gonna go with Z metal, I kind of like Z metal. It is kind of like a stylized metal, but if you notice, it kind of changes the whole face too, and I don't want that. So I want to come to color and fill object. So now it'll just fill this chain metal with this material. Now I can go back to the the rep to the first material that I had, the base material, and now the face is just basic material, and then the chain link is metal it's a little too dark let's see yeah it's a little too dark so i can just go back to the chain now now instead of hitting the m i hit the rb rgb or the color here i'm just going to give it like a lighter lighter color and then i'm going to hit the same thing color fill object And then it did pop up a little lighter, but you can't really see it. Interesting. Maybe it's the lighting too. So let's see how it looks with a BPR render. Yeah, see, it just looks a little too dark for the chain now. So I'm gonna go back to the chain now. Take that off. Ah, oh, see, I had the. I don't know why sometimes the paint, the poly paint comes on and then it just like completely darkens the the mesh. But just pay attention to that. Now it looks a lot more uh, metally and like the color that I want. Let's see. So let's see. Color, fill object. Yeah, so. Oh, see, and it did it again. Interesting. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave it like this for how it is because this is pretty much what I wanted to show you guys. And let me just pop off a quick BPR with the, everything aligned. And you just play with the lighting until you get the desired look. Let's see, let's see what this looks like. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Just a little too dark because you could always mess around with that with the color right here. up the intensity of the light to one. Hopefully that just brings it out. Hit it with the BPR and it kind of looks the same but you guys get the, the point. But yeah I hope uh, hope you guys learned something new when I when creating this and 
If not, I hope this was just a nice simple refresher on micro poly meshes. And yeah, happy sculpting. <laughs>